want to ask you this question, Ken. So what, what marked you in, in your life? Um, having, or how did Father Dasani or Father Dasani's children mark your life? And when I say children, obviously we're, we're talking about people who met Father Dasani themselves. How did they mark your life? And uh, tell us that, that story. Yeah, so uh, hello everyone. And, and thank you, Holly, for uh, inviting me to speak. Um, uh, I just I just want to say uh, I've I've lived in New York City pretty much my whole life. I'm a husband and a father. My daughter's 11 years old. Um, she was adopted when she was a few days old. Um, I've been working at the Electric and Gas Utility Company of New York for the past 27 years. I've I've had the same job, um, and uh, I never met Father Giussani. All right, I was one one of those people who who, who met him through. Uh, other ways. All right. So I, I came to know him through an, the encounter with the movement of community liberation, uh, which started out really as an encounter with a theater group that was back uh, in, in 2003. I happened to audition for a show because uh, I, I have an acting background and I hadn't been acting in over 10 years. And my friend called me up and said, hey, why don't you get back into it? And I was like, well, you know, maybe I'll just give it a try. And then I went down and I auditioned, I got a role in the show and I met these people and members of CL were part of this theater group. And um, I got friendly with them and I started to get um, invited to things. Uh, but most importantly, I started to date one of those members. And that would became my link with Father Giussani because uh, that woman who I dated uh, invited me to everything, uh, these exercises and talks and lectures. And, and I met these people that seemed very strange to me, you know, because I, I, they were unlike anyone else I'd ever met, any kind of Catholic group or any kind of group I'd ever met. Uh, they were filled with energy, filled with uh, intensity and um, there were many of them and they came from Italy and they were from New York and you couldn't pinpoint them. They weren't like, oh, these people are from the Staten Island group. They were like this vast array of diverse people that um, was like an explosion of encounters that happened, you know? Um, and at the time, you know, I, I was, you know, I was living my faith as best as I could, right? Pretty much by myself, right? Because I didn't have a community. Uh, when I met my, uh, met this woman who I, I started dating, you know, I, I started having all these people in my life all of a sudden and um, very fascinating people, people who were interested in um, things, you know, things, uh, things uh, interested in music, which I love music, you know, so I was like, wow, I made people that love to sing, love to play music, uh, people who love drama, who love beauty, who love art, who love everything, basically. You know, it wasn't a thing that these people weren't interested in. And, and there was an, an enthusiasm for life, a positivity that these people had, which was just very attractive. Uh, of course, the most attractive one was the woman I dated who eventually became my wife. Uh, she's actually on this call now. And my daughter as well is on the call. Uh, they are down in the lower box there. Um, so uh, Naomi is her name and uh, Georgia Ann is my daughter. Uh, Naomi uh, really had a passion for me uh, following Father Giussani, you know, and uh, more so, I, and I didn't even realize uh, more than I did, you know, and I, I would, I was hemming and hawing all the time and I had a million objections because, you know, I don't like the way they do this and how this and that and blah, blah, blah. And she just kept inviting me, inviting me, inviting me. And over time, in a very short period of time, I began to really be amazed. I was like, wow, this is really what I was looking for. I was looking for people, a people that I could be with and walk with always, you know, and, and live my faith in a way that, that um, was interesting uh, and open my heart up. Because whenever I would go to these things, hear these talks, and again, Father Jassani is not here. It's other people, you know, that are basically transmitting the spirit of Father Giussani, you know, and I, and there's names, there's lots and lots of names, you know, there, I can just rattle them off, you know, uh, Chris Faf and Angelo and Riro and Jonathan and Simo and Monica and John Fromm and Stella and Monsignor and Vita Dini and the list goes on and on and on, all these names that became part of my experience 
of living my faith, which was just great. Um, and it, it, what, what struck me was that because I, I had rediscovered my faith because I, I like a lot of people, you know, teenagers, I had my rebellious period. And then I rediscovered my faith in college through a friend of mine who became priest uh, later, the one who actually called me to go audition for the show. Um, and I, my experience of, of Catholicism and Christianity at that time, what I encountered were basically three things. It was uh, either a group of people were very heavily spiritual, where everything was focused around praying, everything was focused around either mass or everything. And then your daily life was kind of not really dealt with head on. You know, it was like an aside. The main thing was just make sure you pray and all that thing. Or that there was a there was a focus on being good, you know, making sure you don't do the uh, you don't sin, you, you do the right thing, and you know, it's everything is about being good and doing good deeds and things. Or the other focus would be the right ideas. Uh, I, I am right. There's a political position that Christianity comes with and everyone else is around us is wrong and we have to defend ourselves against the wrong people. And it's about how the world is going to hell in a handbasket. And okay, so those are basically the three kind of focuses in my experience of Christianity. When I met the movement of Father Jasani, none of those things were which was fascinating to me. So I'm just like, if you don't have those things, then what is it? What's left? Well, what's left is Christ and, and his presence. And the thing that impacted me the most about Father Jasani is that there was this insistence of looking and seeking, acknowledging the presence of Christ now, starting from my experience, starting from my day-to-day -day life. And now, then all of a sudden, everything became meaningful. I started to look for him in my job and I started to share those experiences at my, of my job with people of the movement. And it started to become a journey of growth and of faith um, where it, nothing was lost, you know, everything was included. And uh, this, this was a huge impact for me, even to this very day. And it challenges me because I almost like want Christianity to be this thing that I put in a box but it's, it, it's imposing, it's constantly imposing on me, you know? And, um, you know, Father Jasani was just, um, he was somebody who, who was just so uh, dogged about this. And when I watched the video and I'll end here, the thing that struck me the most was the life of this man, the vivacity of this man, the passion of this man, the certainty, the incredible conviction that this man had of the truth and the force of his convictions. Um, and, and, and that there was people around him and that he, he created this people that spilled over into the United States, spilled over into New York city and spilled over to that theater group and spilled over into my life. You know, so what he, all of that conviction of the, tr for the truth, all of that passion to communicate the presence of Christ has made its way over to me, an Italian American from Brooklyn who works at Con Edison. And that continues to be a source of fascina fascination and a journey where now, because in the beginning it was very exciting, exciting, but now it's becoming, as I grow older, these people are helping me live, They're helping me get through the difficult things in my life. They're helping me to judge, to look constantly at where um, I'm being led to that's good in spite of how difficult things can be. I'll end there. Thanks, Ken. Uh, Margaret, same question for you. How has the encounter with Jasani or with the children of Jasani helped, um, like shaped and formed you? Yeah, um, I, I would say that I encountered Jasani in high school, um, in my years of GS, but I would say really that I began to have this affection for him, this deep love for him in my years in university um, and in living the life of the clue. Um, because we do, you know, school of community regularly, charitable work, um, have dinners together, study together, all of these things that um, were proposals that had been given to us. Um, and I, I realized the love for Father Jasani because I realized these proposals were coming from someone um, we're coming from like from Father Jasani who knew and loved Jesus um, and so 
he taught people about Jesus and this way to live, who then taught other people, who then taught other people, who then like somehow it's in Minnesota um, and we're living this experience of Clue together. Um, and I realized in this, in living this life of um, Clue with my friends, I started to realize how much Father Jasani like must have loved me. But it's funny to say, right? Because I never met him, like he never knew me. I'm from Minnesota, from Northern Minnesota, a small town. Like, how could I say this? Um, but I realized it's because it's the way he was like a father to all of us, the way he pointed us towards the good, like towards a way of following Jesus here and now, um, towards a way of living the Christian event today that has to do with my heart, that has to do with everything. Um, and that's like what a father does, right? Like he points his kids towards what's good and beautiful. Um, and I see again and again, and this is something I continue to discover. Like I see again and again, this is what Father Jasani um, does for me in this way of life that he's left um, for us to follow. In At a certain point in the video, he says, he's recounting how Christianity was spread. Like someone told someone, told someone, then those people, you'll see it if you watch the video, it's really beautiful. And then he says, and then they told my mother about Jesus. And then my mother told me. And as I watched that, I started smiling because I was like, wow. And then you told someone who then told someone who then told someone who then told me. Um, and and it was just this huge moment of gratitude because, um, because Jesus reaches us through a particular place and through like a particular um, expression. And uh personality you know and all of this for me has to do with Jasani and the way he is also you see in the video so much of his personality and and yeah I just experienced a huge affection as if I was almost watching like home videos of like my grandfather or something <laughs> I was like I yeah just so much love because of the beauty that he's introduced me to the the exceptionality that it is to to be alive and like the, the gift of life and how this overflows into everything and what what our encounter with Christ has has to do with everything still today. Um, so I've never met Father Jasani, but I I have met him and I love him very deeply. Great. That's a that's a wonderful segue into um, into the exhibit itself. So um, why don't we watch it? We're going to watch a trailer of the video, it's very short, but just gives you a, a little taste for what hopefully you will watch after this encounter. Ma chi è Don Giussani? È un prete qualsiasi della diocesi di Milano. L'uomo non può immaginare un problema più grande per la sua libertà. Cristo, sì o no? Sempre rimasto nella sua gravità di profeta, di uomo dei miracoli. Donna, non piangere, disse, per restituire il figlio. Ma disse prima, donna, non piangere. Un uomo che non viva un momento così con la sua donna, non ha mai amato la sua donna, mai. Un padre ed una madre sono tali non solo perché danno latte prima e risotto dopo al figlio che cresce, ma un padre e una madre danno loro stessi, un padre da sé stesso al figlio. Come mio padre, quando accanto al mio letto, mi raccontava la parabola del ricco e pulone. Lui era un socialista accanito, perciò tutte le sere ricco e pulone. aspettavano così perché credo in quello che dico questo e basta sì. so when i watch that video a couple things stick out um one is the um 
yeah, like why, why do people follow you? Right? The question, why do people follow you? Because I believe what I say. I met Father Giussani in 1984. I was just out of college and had gone to Europe with a couple of girlfriends and we're going to travel around for a couple of months. And then by chance, I met as much like Ken, I met somebody who was a child of Father Giussani and um, who met somebody and you know, I met, kept meeting these people. And after a couple of months in Italy, um, I decided to go ahead and stay there. And I ended up staying for a couple of years. And in that time, I was, um, I had the great fortune of meeting Father Giussani and spending quite a bit of time with him. And, and, and that, that video was, was, um, yeah, it was indicative of, of him in the sense of, you know, I'm a priest, I'm a priest called to do what God has called me to do. I have nothing more than you have, you know, I have, I have my mission, myself, my vocation, and and my work and that's what you have and 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 that's exactly um probably the most important thing i learned um in in living with him well maybe not the most important but one of them and the second was the absolute sense of humor he um he loved people he loved life and you'll see in the full-length video um you see him playing with kids as a high school teacher and you know even as an older man jo you know joshing around with people he had a sense of the real like life is beautiful it's fun it's enjoyable you know you can make a joke and and whatnot so um i'm going to throw this back at you ken and margaret anything else in the the video you want to share and then we'll open it to some questions. Anything else that was interesting for you that maybe snapped a, a memory or anything, or we can move on. Do you want to go, Ken? We'll start with you, okay. Margaret. <laughs> um, one thing, and it was from uh, a time when he's giving a talk, and he says, the supreme task of our lives is to spread the message of Christ. Um, and then earlier on when he talks in the video about why he left his studying of theology to teach the kids, because he really wanted, like he had so much affection for the world. Like he was so convicted of, of who Christ was for the world that he, he had this passion to share it. Like you see it in the way he speaks and in the way that he gave himself to, um, to those GS kids or whoever he's playing with or I don't know, the way he completely gave himself, um, I was just really struck by that, by even the way he says that in the moment in the video, when he says the supreme task of our lives is to spread the message of Christ, he's like whacking the table so hard, <laughs> but like he, yeah, yeah, he really, he really was passionate um, for the love of Jesus. Ken, how about you? Yeah, I, the thing that comes to mind the most is when he talks about what man is, that man is a desire for the infinite, desire for happiness, and the and so insistent on that, um, which I don't know why that strikes me so much, um, but uh, that really resonated with me, you know, because, uh, you know, like I was saying before, that, you know, the journey of, of Christianity can, can so often be uh, kind of reduced to just doing good things and being good, uh, that his starting point, that his emphasis was on, and his passion was for happiness, um, really struck me, you know, like, uh, it just made me realize more fully that, you know, God wants me to be happy now, you know, that, that that's of vital importance. And, um, and that it's possible to have that happiness um, now, you know, that even, even when life is tough, even through a pandemic, you know, that there could be, there could be joy, that there could be, um, that my heart could be filled, you know. Beautiful. Okay, I forgot to introduce, but I will now, this is the perfect time, our two beautiful volunteers who are gonna help us um, now, Emma and Matteo, they are um, our coordinators of the technology for this. So what we'd like to ask you to do is if you have questions for um, either Ken or Margaret, just go ahead and either raise your physical hand or raise your virtual hand. It's not so intuitive, the virtual hand, and then, um, and then, and then we can deal with them. So. Deacon Rich, the tech coordinators have to unmute you. There oh. 
Uh, thank you so much for uh, the presentation and the witness. One of the things that strikes me uh, about uh, Giassani and the whole movement, frankly, and you see it with uh, Monsignor Albacetti or Lorenzo uh, as well. And the thing that drew him was the idea that uh, not only it was a connection of the humanity and the love of God, that what we were really created for is something more uh, and to be a part of that love. And that's the, the source of the happiness, really. It's not happiness in the normal way we talk about it, but you know, something more than that. So I'm wondering, I know that uh, for both Ken and Margaret, it sounds to me like the thing that drew you in initially was uh, the happiness and love you saw in other people. Uh, but I'm wondering what was the thing that uh, helped you move to the place where you accepted that as well for yourself, that you're made for this greater thing, uh, you know, that uh, God loves you and, and all your humanity and the way you are, and you're not inadequate, which is a lot of the, the I think the stuff that we deal with in our, our own lives in a sense. But how did it become the, the call of Christ and the love of Christ become personal for you through uh, the movement and, and Giassani? I, I appreciate that might be difficult to answer because it's, uh, you know, it, it might not be a pinpoint moment where you can say, yeah, this was it, but, but it might be helpful. <laughs> Ken, you want to go ahead and start? Sure, sure. I, I guess I'll say that um, it happens over time. And it's not a one and done kind of thing. You know, like, I need to know that today. It wasn't, it's not good enough that yesterday or a year ago or three years ago, I felt that God loves me and that he wants my happiness. And that's, and that it's not about how, you know, adequate I am or anything that I'm, I'm valued for who I am. That, that, that is a constant journey. But the miracle is that it, this, this people, this community, I'm able to journey, take that journey with this presence, this community, so that at any given time, as long as I stay, I can be corrected, I can be brought back. I can't tell you the number of times I've been on the phone either you know, with my brother-in-law or, or you know, someone who just brings me back to that reality. You know? So it's a matter of you know, over time having these encounters. You know, and they're simple encounters. It's meals. It's meals with my friend, Father Rich. It's meals with my brother-in-law, Jonathan. It's, it's, a, it's a Zoom call with Giorgio Vitadini. It's a, you know, like there's these meetings and these things that these like seemingly chance encounters where that reality all of a sudden comes true. Somebody says a word, a sentence, and, and, and all of a sudden life becomes clearer in that moment. But then, you know, I can go back, right? Cause I'm sinful and I, you know, I, I'm, I, I'm a head case too, right? I have all kinds of demons and things that I, I struggle with, right? And so I need somebody to say, to reach in today, now and say, Ken, stop. This is what reality is, you know? And then that person, so often I see that person as the hand of God saying that to me, you know? Um, you know, I was, I was uh, struggling with a lot of self-doubt about something the other day. And at, at a certain point, um, my wife turned to me and says, listen, you can't worry about that. It's not about you. It's about this. It's about this. And this is what it's about. And she goes, listen, this is God talking to you. <laughs> and at first I thought, how, how presumptuous of you? you know, how, how can you say God is talking? But, and I understood there's truth to what she's saying. Because her love and her affection for me in that moment, her ability to pull me out of myself and look at the truth of what was happening, that, that's God, you know? But it's how do, do we really believe it? You know, so it, again, it's a journey, and I don't very often believe it, but there's moments where it's, it's so powerful that you say, wait a second, how can I not believe it now? My heart is, is opened now. I'm, I'm filled with hope. I'm filled with, I can start again. I have energy, you know? that's the sign that something happened to me, you know, that I, I can start again anew and that, and that the truth has reached me. Yeah, I hope that helps. Thanks, Ken. Margaret? Yeah, I would say, I mean, definitely something over time 
um, that I'm still discovering, but I would say it's always the people. It's always a friendship. Like for me, especially, I was asked to help Father Pietro to lead um, Clue. So like the university students that follow Father Dasani um, to be his secretary, which I really did not want this job. <laughs> I tried to get out of it like four times. I tried to quit like four times during it. <laughs> I like hate emails. Like I didn't want to do Zooms. It was like coordinating things. I just like, I felt so bad at it. It was anyways. Um, but I would say that for me in the end was a huge moment of um, being loved because I was kept in this place where I discover again and again, like what it is that I desire, who it is that I'm looking for. Um, and so in like the humor of God, I guess he takes me in this way that like <laughs> I was so annoyed by, but I continued through all of those things, even the things that were like so difficult to plan, like planning big events and moments where you fail and all these things. I always, the companionship always remained like my friendship, especially with Father Pietro again and again was like a new beginning. Like it was like being looked at again, how um, the father looks at me like again and again through these people. And so, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's something again, though, I ask to, to know more every day. Great. Anuk from beautiful California. Well, thank you so much for taking my question. So uh, for me, I mean, pardon me if this is a very silly question, but uh, really uh, deeply educational experience was this posing this question of uh, whether there is a certain, to some extent, there is any um, cult of personality of Jusani involved in this group. And like posing the question to myself and like finding the answer to that question was deeply uh, learning. I mean, uh, deeply educational for me. So I wanna hear in your words whether you wonder whether, you know, how do you know that this is not about Jusani, but something else? So I'll, I'll, I'll take that first. Um, so uh, first, you know, cult of personality is when the personality dies, um, a lot of the cult goes away too, right? Um, and in this case, that really hasn't happened. In fact, it's um, some ways gotten stronger and has continued on many years after his death. Um, for me, that's a, that's a big sign. But also, um, so my experience is through, uh, of Father Jasani is through the people he, he has generated. The content of, uh, the, content of uh, the relationships that I have, the content of, the, of, of what we're discussing is not Father Jasani, it's the truth. The, um, <laughs> the, the passion, the conviction, the, 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 the desire um, uh, for beauty, um, all of these things that we focus on are not focused on Father Jasani, they're focused on those things. And, but what this moment is, for me, very important is to understand the origin of those experiences. You know, my, my life has helped. You know, like another thing is like, through the people that he has generated, I'm helped to live, I'm helped uh, to grow, I'm helped to have faith and to walk through life, which is very hard, especially now, um, with hope, right? So I, I can't look at that and say, well, that's, that's just because I'm worshiping Father Jasani. I, that's a real thing. You can't manufacture hope. You can't manufacture happiness. But when it happens and you say, wow, and that, wait, I can trace that to, oh, this person. But wait, why? and I have to ask myself this question. Why, why is that person that way? Oh, because maybe he knows that person and this person. And it all goes back to an origin, Father Jasani. And ultimately, further back to, uh, from Father Jasani, all will be back to Christ, right? That's the lineage. But uh, this is an, an important moment to focus on Father Jasani because he, his yes to Christ has generated something and it, 
I want to understand the origin of that. I want to understand who this man was because I am a part of him. You know, I, I have become a part of him, who he was, the way that he followed Christ uh, is part of me. So I want to understand who I am a better. So I think that's why this is not a cult of personality, but rather understanding the origins of our experience. I might jump in here really quick before the next question or Margaret. Um, I was very moved at the, first of all, your question's beautiful. Like, how do you know it's not a personality we're following or, you know, uh, um, at Father Giussani's funeral, Cardinal, then Cardinal Ratzinger said that Giussani always pointed to Christ. His life was wounded by Christ. And for me, that was my experience as well. Every time I spoke with him, going to speak with him about a challenge or about a step or just to share good news of life and how things were going, um, it was always about Christ. It was never about you and me, right? So you're, uh, for me, it was to gaze at someone who saw something deeper than I saw. Um, and, and that clearly was Christ. Um, yeah, so. Margaret, did you want to respond to that? Um, I think it's an interesting question because I recently um, discovered it, I think in a different way with the work we're doing in school community in generating traces right now, because one of the chapters that we're reading is on the charism. And sometimes I, I would get you know, frustrated thinking, oh, why are we talking about the charism again? Why are we talking about you know, like, are we just being self-referential or whatever? But this time something changed because I hadn't been able to go to school community for a really long time. Um, and the more I was away from it, the more I discovered I was like missing something, you know? I felt um, less, less myself, less alive, less, um, yeah, I don't know, less myself. And, and then going back to school community again, um, I, I realized that the charism was given to Father Giussani um, as a specific way, a specific path for people to meet Jesus. And like, for me, that's how it happened. So then instead of talking, like instead of, it's not self-referential or just talking about a personality or just a place or just, um, because it's always, again, the point for me to start again, to like love again, to love my brothers and sisters, again my mom and dad to like see the beautiful again like it always is for me the point that from which I go I go out you know um and and not stay in you know so both of you spoke um so beautifully about um the specific path that you have been called to which is for me um to see that Christ called you where you were how you were um, that's the same experience I think that many, many of us on this call could have, could say, he called me in Imola, Italy. He called you in Brooklyn, New York. He called you in Crosby, Minnesota. He calls us where we're at, how we are. And, um, today with the, the interview with Archbishop Pierre and Barry, um, Stolman. It was beautiful because Father Dusan or Father, uh, the Archbishop said that the education that we're given, we're able to see what our heart desires so much so that we can see the call. And, um, and you both gave witness to that today. I saw how he called me because he taught me how to look at my heart. So um, thank you for that.